Today, I'm going to tell you the story of an ordinary office worker who, unfortunately, was often exploited in his job as a video game developer. But all that was about to change when, in his free time, he installed a strange app on his phone. This app granted him a system that could make him money by completing missions. Of course, if he failed to complete them, there would be penalties, and the system would disappear. Additionally, this system gave him the chance to change his life by sending him several years back in time to his university days. In other words, he got the opportunity everyone dreams of, starting over with all the knowledge of his future. Obviously, he didn't plan to waste this chance and aim to become a millionaire tycoon, winning over the girls he never had a shot with before. So, if you're interested in the story of this lucky guy, stick around, get comfy, and grab some popcorn because today, I'm summarizing losing money to be a tycoon. The story starts with our protagonist, Kong, an ordinary guy who, as usual, was running late for work. He dashed through the city to make it on time and explained how he had worked at various companies, always ending up exploited and spending more time in the office than at home. After navigating a series of obstacles, he managed to arrive at his company just in time, where he, like every day, performed lengthy tasks that weren't even part of his job description. He took advantage of every little distraction from his boss to spend time on a well-known video game in which he was one of the top-ranked players globally. After a long day, it was finally time to go home, or so he thought. Just as he was about to leave, his boss asked him to stay a few more hours to finish a project. Khan coldly responded that it wasn't part of his job and that he should be given a bonus if he had to do it or he might consider suing. After saying that, he imagined asking the girl he liked out. But in reality, he had no choice but to accept his boss's orders and stay working until dawn. However, his life was about to take a 180 degree turn. During a short break, he noticed a strange link on his phone, and upon opening it, an app installed itself, stating, go big or go home. Kong didn't understand what it meant until a mysterious voice announced the activation of the fortune conversion system. A strange light enveloped Kong, who had no clue what was happening, and seconds later, he was sucked into a portal that appeared in his trash can. Moments later, he woke up to find himself in his old college dorm room, with his former best friend waking him up. As he slowly started to process the situation, he realized his body was from 10 years ago when he was a freshman. He spent the rest of the day trying to figure out how to return, until it hit him, this was a second chance to change his miserable life. At that moment, a system window appeared, displaying his initial stats, and the voice introduced itself as the fortune conversion system. It offered him an initial fund to get rich, but this money could only be used to start a business. Before receiving the funds, the system spun a wheel to determine Kane's profit rate. By a stroke of luck, the business would be more beneficial if it lost money rather than gained it. Kong thought this was perfect, as making a business fail seemed much easier. However, the system warned him not to lose money on purpose, or he would be penalized. Once the system disappeared, Khan started researching the best type of business to start and decided on a video game company, knowing it was easy for projects to fail in that industry. But when he presented the idea to the system, it registered and gave him 15 days to create and launch the first game. If he failed, the system would be cancelled. Obviously, our protagonist panicked since he had no idea how to create a game from scratch. Luckily, his best friend Lian mentioned an app that lets you create homemade video games. The catch? Each template had a hefty price tag, but that wasn't an issue for our protagonist, who now had half a million in funding. The only problem was that he could only use that money for the business. Once he got some templates from the app, he focused on creating the project. He decided to make a very basic driving game, no challenging obstacles or fancy scenery. He made the track ridiculously long, hoping it would bore players to death. He set a low purchase price and, in less than 8 hours, his first project was done. He launched it on an app used by amateurs to sell their games, expecting to get rich from the company's losses. Days passed, and when he checked the download page, he saw that his game hadn't received a single download. Things were going as planned. He figured he just needed to wait a few weeks to reap the system's benefits. Meanwhile, he enjoyed his university life, reminiscing about how he had no place to go after graduation as an orphan and had to dive straight into work. But now, with the money he was about to earn, he could afford the luxuries he never had. At the same time, we meet Lin, a well-known streamer who reviews video games. Unfortunately for our protagonist, Lin stumbled upon his game and decided to give it a try despite its lack of downloads. Lin quickly realized the game was monotonous, 
but due to the poorly designed track, the difficulty of the curves excited him. After losing several times, he got serious, only to discover the track was too long and there was no pause option. Hours later, when he was about to finish, he lost again and was greeted by a mocking message, which only fueled his determination. After 24 hours and 48 minutes, Lin finally completed the game, only to be met with a trolling message mocking him for wasting so much time. Meanwhile, our protagonist asked the system for a financial update and was pleased to see that only a few people had downloaded the game, meaning he'd soon profit from the losses. But then, he overheard his classmates talking about a game that was so bad everyone wanted to try it. To his shock, they were talking about his game. He rushed to his room to check the download page and found that his game had gone from one download to thousands in just a few hours. Most of the reviews were positive, saying it was fun for killing time. It turned out that Lin's video trashing the game had gone viral, making people curious and eager to try it themselves. His plan had backfired spectacularly. The game had become a global phenomenon, and even his friend was addicted, trying to beat other players' records. The protagonist couldn't believe it. His plan was a failure, and with the deadline approaching, his company would make thousands in profits, leaving him with only a small personal gain. By the way, rumors about the success of the protagonist's company even reached the ears of the country's top game development company, who were curious about the genius behind the popular game. Meanwhile, our protagonist was panicking. He had no clue how to intentionally lose money and even searched online for ways to lose money, but only found tips on how to make it. The system reported the company's earnings for the month, showing massive growth despite the game being cheap. The game had thousands of downloads, but only a tiny percentage of the profits went to Kong. The system then informed him that due to his excellent results, his new investment fund would be double the previous one, making it harder to create a mediocre project. But on the bright side, if he failed, the losses would be significant. However, he had a time limit to come up with a new project. Luckily, he had the idea to involve his best friend, Lian, who was terrible at games and might give him a lousy idea. A few days later, Kong revealed that he was the creator of the viral game and offered Lian a job as a creative assistant for his next game. Shocked, Lian accepted immediately since he had always wanted to work in the gaming industry. He wondered why Kong chose him, the least knowledgeable about games in their group. Unexpectedly, Lian spent days studying game development, contrary to Kang's expectations. Kong began analyzing the gaming platform to decide on a new theme. He couldn't replicate his previous game, as his followers would catch on. He needed to make a quick decision as the system warned him the time to present a new project was running out. Fortunately, Kong came up with an idea likely to fail, creating a complex and difficult game. He decided on a card game, as such games had become boring to the gaming community, and competition was high with many creators releasing similar games regularly. Kong shared the idea with Lian and chose to invest in an extremely structured template to add complexity to the game. He tasked Lian with designing the characters for the cards, encouraging him to use his creative freedom to ensure the designs were unattractive and unappealing to the public. Interestingly, Lian's salary was significantly higher than Kang's, as the system allowed him to spend large sums as long as it was related to the company. At the same time, the top gaming company was also working on a card game, planning to crush Kang's company, which had stolen so much of their market share with his previous game. After receiving Lian's character designs, Khan hired the least experienced illustrator to ensure the drawings wouldn't attract much attention. Confident that Lian's unconventional characters would doom the game, they continued working on the rest of the designs. Lian suggested turning the characters into attractive girls, but Kong rejected this idea, knowing it would make the game too popular. He deceived Lian, saying it would ruin the originality they were striving for. Additionally, he showed Lian the illustrator he planned to hire, but Lian was skeptical because the guy only had experience drawing chibi characters, which might not provide the realism they were aiming for. Kong reassured him, saying he had everything under control. Later, they met with the illustrator to discuss his fee. Lian was shocked by the high rate, but even more so when Kong offered to pay triple, intending to make the company lose money. To hide his true intentions, Kong gave a motivational speech, saying he trusted the illustrator with some creative decisions. Kong thought someone used to simple drawings wouldn't deliver anything too eye-catching. However, the illustrator got overly motivated by his words. After the meeting, Khan left the rest of the character designs and scenery creation to Lian while he focused on programming the controls and finding ways to lower the game's quality. He decided to create various in-game items that were free, thinking players would get bored quickly with such easy rewards. For the controls, 
He based them on an interface from a failed company he found online, not expecting the animations to be better than he thought. Meanwhile, the illustrator and his team started designing the characters based on Lian's random and mismatched ideas. The team was initially disappointed, thinking Kong was playing a joke on them, but the illustrator, motivated by being paid up front and trusted with creative freedom, explained that this was their chance to draw what they were passionate about, realism. They worked day and night to deliver the best possible designs. A few weeks later, the designs were finished. Kong, half asleep, asked Lian to upload the game to the platform without even checking the designs. The next day, Lian reported that there weren't many downloads. Happy with this, Khan told him not to change anything and to keep the game description simple. Days later, Khan checked the character designs and was furious, accusing Lian of stealing them from another game. Lian explained that these were the illustrator's designs, which turned out to be practically professional, with high-quality details like those in top-tier games. Khan couldn't believe it, nothing was going as planned. Still, he held on to a sliver of hope, thinking that even great-looking games often fail. However, after its launch, the game started getting several downloads, not as many as the previous game, but still quite a lot. Unfortunately, someone hired bots to leave negative reviews, which upset Lian, who wanted to fix it. Kong, seeing this as an opportunity, told him not to intervene, pretending that they shouldn't pay attention to such details. By the way, Jumpy Eye, the illustrator, wanted to check out the game after all. He wanted to see his creations in action, though he was a bit worried that the game hadn't been promoted. His friends explained it might still be in the testing phase. He spent the entire night playing the game and concluded it was a masterpiece. The gameplay was simple, but the animations and art were top-notch. He was surprised by the few downloads it had and that valuable items could be obtained for free, unlike other games where you had to spend a lot of money. Curious, he reached out to Lien to ask if there was something wrong with the game, which might explain the lack of promotion. Lien said his boss hadn't mentioned anything about it, and perhaps there were no funds for advertising. Plus, he explained that premium items were free so all players could enjoy them, which was Kang's excuse to Lien. Jumpy Eye was so moved by this that he thought Kong was just a gaming enthusiast who didn't mind losing money to help others. So, he decided to lend a hand by asking all his illustrator contacts to promote the game on their social media, praising it as one of the best he had seen. Obviously, this strategy worked. Days later, when Kong was preparing to collect the money from the losses, he heard from Lian that the game had become a global top hit overnight, going from a few downloads to millions worldwide. Kong was shocked. Checking the comments, he saw everyone was amazed by the beautiful designs and considered him a genius for the innovative idea of giving all players access to premium items based on their in-game merits. Khan was stunned and contacted Jumpy Eye to ask what he had done. Jumpy Eye replied that he just returned the favor since Kong was the only person who trusted him and hoped to continue working with him, confident that Kang's company would become the best in-game creation. Khan was speechless, nothing was going as he had planned. Even his friend began to believe Kong was a genius, as he always seemed to have everything under control. Meanwhile, the rival company that also launched a card game suffered a colossal failure. Kang's game overshadowed it completely, and not even the bots they sent to trash talk the game helped. Yes, these guys were responsible for that, but now they knew about the genius behind Kang's company and didn't plan to stop until they destroyed him. Back to Kong, he had no idea what to do. In the last few weeks, his game had become one of the top 10 global recommendations, and downloads kept increasing. He contacted the gaming platform, asking them to stop recommending his creation. However, the system reprimanded him, warning he would be penalized for doing so. With no ideas left, the deadline for the second project arrived. The system showed him the earnings for the last month, which were astronomical. Unfortunately, it didn't benefit Kong much, although he was now earning a decent salary thanks to the high profits. For the next project, the system quadrupled his basic fund. This meant the next game had to be on an even larger scale, making it harder to fail. Kang's small company had gained significant fame with just two releases. Still, if he failed this time, the profits would be enough for him never to have to work again. Meanwhile, the rival company, tired of being beaten by Kang's company, decided to send a juicy offer to buy it. Lien called Kong to inform him, and under Kang's direction, he rejected the offer. No matter how many millions they offered, Kong had no choice but to refuse, as he didn't want to lose the system. He saw this as an opportunity to lose some money by trying to invest in their company, but the rivals rejected his offer and considered his words an offense. From that moment on, they were determined to destroy him. Now things got serious. 
Kong had a meeting with Lian to discuss the company's future. Lian, now earning an executive salary due to the company's profits, contrasted with Kang's still basic salary, gave Kong an idea. Kong decided to create a physical company, thinking it might be easier to lose money that way. First, he needed to hire someone to handle all the paperwork. The next day, they visited a hiring agency. The guy there looked at them with disdain, thinking they were a couple of losers wasting his time, and suggested finding a college friend for the job. He was shocked to learn they were the masterminds behind the rapidly growing company. His attitude changed, offering them the best employees. Kong chose a very attractive assistant with a high salary, hoping to lose some money. The manager eagerly recommended her, wanting to please Kong, now seen as an executive genius. By the way, as Kong was leading the company, he ran into Lin, a girl who was a huge fan of his game. She got furious when he suggested she shouldn't waste her time on a game like that. She snapped back, telling him not to insult the mastermind behind such a masterpiece. After Kong left, Lin contacted the manager, trying to get a job at Kang's company. She was shocked to learn that the guy she admired so much was the same one she had insulted earlier. A few days later, Kong had a meeting with his new employee to discuss her contract. Enter Jean, a beautiful executive with extensive knowledge of running a business. She admired Kong for all he had achieved at such a young age. Kong gave her one condition before hiring her, she had to follow his orders to the letter, even if she thought he was wrong. With that agreed upon, Kong rented a building in the best area with the best view, sparing no expense. He didn't just rent a floor, he rented the entire building. He asked Jean to get all the necessary furniture and equipment for the company, emphasizing that she shouldn't skimp on anything. He wanted the best tech, recreational facilities, and an audiovisual room. He even demanded the best office setup since he planned to live there, making it the only way he could use company money for himself. Jean suggested he buy some business-appropriate clothes, which Kong eagerly did, seeing it as another way to use company funds for personal gain. Kong began recruiting new employees personally, aiming to find people who weren't overly qualified. His first candidate was Liching, an old friend who spent most of his time gaming. He invited Liching to join him in creating the best game in the industry. Liching agreed, though Kong chose him knowing he would eventually get distracted by games. Kong also needed more employees to increase payroll expenses. On his way to the office, Kong met Tai, an office worker who, like Kong in his past life, was exploited by his boss. Feeling empathetic, Kong invited Tai for an interview. Tai was stunned to learn Kong was the famous tycoon known for his game development talent. Impressed by the office, Tai expressed concern about his lack of game development experience. Kong reassured him that everyone started from scratch and offered him a job with triple his previous salary. A few days later, while taking a nap, Kong was interrupted by Lin, the girl from before, who was eager to work at his company. She wanted to work alongside someone who loved games as much as she did and believed Kong was that person. Meanwhile, Kong heard from his assistant that Lin had a pretty bad track record at her previous companies. This convinced him even more to hire her. Since being hired, he only told his employees to enjoy their time at the company by playing video games. They thought he did this to help them come up with new ideas and understand the online gaming industry better. In reality, Kong was just enjoying the company facilities and resting until he could think of a way to lose money. Finally, he realized his ideas were too good. So, he decided to delegate the creation of the next project to his employees. But first, he gave them a motivational speech, saying their company was currently the number one in gaming in the country. He didn't want just any simple game, he wanted something that would revolutionize the market. That's why he rejected experienced game creators and hired newbies like them. Experienced creators followed rules, but he wanted his team to use their imagination to create something unique and unprecedented. His words motivated his employees more than expected. They saw him as a genius and were determined to meet his expectations. Kong chose Tai and Lin to develop the game prototype. He gave them guidelines to follow, thinking it wouldn't work. The controls had to be easy and simple, it should be an open world game with an extremely complex and long story, and the weapons should be basic and uninteresting. Tai expressed concerns, thinking mixing such different themes wouldn't work, but Kong insisted they shouldn't be guided by rules and that he trusted them with this task. Kong was getting used to this life, leaving the work to others and just waiting for projects to fail. What he didn't know was that his speech had the opposite effect. His employees were more motivated than ever, working extra hours to finish the game prototype as soon as possible. Tai and Lin concluded that Kang's idea wasn't as crazy as they initially thought. They believed only a genius could come up with such an idea. If they combined all the guidelines as he said, 
the game would be a masterpiece. They started by creating the scenario, an open world game set on a ship filled with mummies, using basic weapons as Kong instructed. The story would be complex, following a mute girl who communicated through signals, guiding players to different game scenarios like ships and islands full of mummies. Players would share information about deciphered clues based on her instructions. After an entire night of work, they finished the prototype. They concluded that Kong was a visionary for coming up with such ideas. Unfortunately, this is where the summary ends. But don't worry, this is just the first part of the story as the anime is still airing, with only 8 episodes released. If you want me to summarize the rest of the story when it's out, leave comments, and I'll try to summarize the remaining episodes. That's all for me for now, and without further ado, see you next time.